As astrophotographers, we face a lot of challenges at night, and one of the most common problems is making sure your stars are actually sharp. And even if you get them sharp at the beginning of the night, there's a good chance within 20 or 30 minutes they're going to be blurry again. This can be especially problematic if you're using a DSLR and a telephoto lens. So today, I want to do a review on the Focus on Stars filter. You might have seen I did an article on this a couple years ago, that was for the wide angle version, but today I'm going to be reviewing the telephoto version, and we'll see how it works. First, let's explain what this filter is and how to set it up properly. Now this is a square 100 millimeter glass filter, and it's basically a higher end version of a Batnov mask if you're familiar with that. And what that does is it causes the light to diffract into three spikes. Then you can adjust your focus ring until the middle spike is directly in the center. At that point, your stars are as sharp as they're going to get. You can take off the filter and begin shooting. And when I'm doing astrophotography with my dedicated astro camera and my telescope, I always use a Batnov mask to achieve perfect focus. But if I'm using my DSLR and telephoto lens, it doesn't come with a Batnov mask, so this is what you'd want to use. In order to best use the Focus on Stars filter, it helps to have a 100mm square filter system. And because I used to be a landscape photographer, I had the Lee filter system, and that allowed me to quickly attach a 95mm filter ring on the front of my telephoto lens. Then I grabbed my filter holder and attached it to the ring. Then finally I could slide in the 100mm filter right into the slot. Now I'm ready to aim up at the stars and begin focusing. I understand that a lot of you might not have a square filter system, and that's okay, because you can always just hand hold the filter right up to the front of the lens, and that should work fine. So that's the basics of how it works, and thankfully it's pretty straightforward. So the next thing we want to do is head outside and see how it performs. I gotta say, I was really surprised just how bright the diffraction spikes were. I wasn't expecting much, but we pointed it up at Venus or Mars, I'm not quite sure. And when we did that and we turned on live view, we could immediately see the diffraction spikes very clearly. Then we can turn the focus ring until the middle spike is directly in the middle. You have to remember though, that your focal length might change. So you wouldn't want to necessarily focus at 200 millimeters if you're going to be shooting at 600, because then you'd have to refocus again. Still, I'd recommend the first thing you do when you get out there and you've done your polar line and everything else, is just aim up to a bright star and get that focus set to begin with. That way it's at least close for later on. After we did this first test on my girlfriend Sony with her 200 600mm lens, I was pretty impressed by the brightness of the spikes, but I wanted to test it out on my Nikon camera next because that one doesn't quite work as well in low light. But as you can see here, the diffraction spikes were just as bright and it made it very easy and fast to focus using the live view feature on my Nikon camera. And this is definitely the preferred way to do things because you can focus in real time. But some of you guys are going to be using older Canon cameras, for example, that don't have the best live view. And so if you try to use it at night, you might not see anything at all. So in that scenario, what you'd have to do is kind of the old fashioned way. You would hold the filter up against the front of your lens, assuming you don't have the filter holder, and you would take roughly a five second long test photo with a high ISO and try to hold that filter as steady as possible without shaking things. When that photo completes, you can look at the playback and see how the diffraction spike looks. Then you can make a slight adjustment on your focus ring and take another photo. Now this does require a lot of trial and error, as you can imagine, but if your live view just isn't up to the task of astrophotography, this is just what you have to do. And even when I'm using my higher end setup with the dedicated astro camera and the telescope and all that stuff, this is the way I have to do things. Take a photo, make an adjustment, take another photo. It does take a while. But that's why I like the Focus on Stars filter, because on any modern new camera, you're going to see that bright diffraction spike on your live view in real time, and you can very quickly focus. After completing these initial tests, I wanted to aim up to a dimmer star to see if we could still see the spikes. And to my surprise, they were still visible. It's not as bright here in the video, but I could still easily see it there in person. However, there's going to be a lot of regions of sky where you're photographing that there might not be any bright stars really whatsoever. That can make this much more difficult. And again, what you probably have to do is take a test photo with the filter held up, see if the stars are sharp, adjust your focus, and keep doing that until it looks as good as possible. But my main point here is just to note that with any Batnov mask or filter like this, it always helps to have a brighter star somewhere there in the frame. Before we go any further, I wanted to mention something else that you might want to get. Because one of the things I've seen is that you might have your stars perfectly focused at, say, 9 o'clock, but by 10.30 they're completely blurry. That's because as your telescope cools down due to the ambient air temperature, the focus shifts slightly. And this can be very annoying to deal with, especially if you want to go to bed. So what I've found that works really well 
is just getting a simple dew heater strip. You can get them for like 15 or 20 bucks on Amazon. I bought a USB powered one. Now I can plug this into my battery and this is gonna keep my telescope or lens at the same temperature all night long. And assuming that I'm not changing filters or anything, I can normally focus once at the start of the night and I know my images are gonna be sharp for the rest of the night, which really makes this process much easier. So I'd highly recommend picking up a dew heater if you don't have one already. Getting back to the Focus on Stars review, I gotta say I was really impressed just how well this performed. I was initially a bit skeptical, I didn't think you'd be able to see the diffraction spikes very well, especially with live view, but I was proven wrong. So if you've been having trouble focusing at night and trying to get that star as small as possible, you know, the old fashioned way, if that's just not working for you very well, you might want to consider getting the Focus on Stars filter for your telephoto lens and DSLR. This is going to give you a clear definitive answer to whether or not your stars are sharp or not. And the best part for me is that you can actually use the live view feature in real time to get those stars sharp in just a few seconds. All right, and that's all I've got for you guys in today's video. My final word on the Focus on Stars filter is that I was pleasantly surprised. I really wasn't expecting much to be honest, but the fact that you can see that clear diffraction spike on your live view really does speed things up. The only downside is just that it is a square filter, which means you're either holding it in front of the lens or you have to invest in a filter holder system, which is not cheap. And if you're not planning on doing neutral density work or with a polarizer, it's probably not worth the extra cost. You're better off just hand holding it, which again has some problems. And don't forget about those dew heaters either, because if you get things focused at the start of the night, it would help if they stayed there. And that dew heater should do the trick. That's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.